Hello there. This is Jeff Freed with Shared Insights, and I'm talking to you live from the floor of Ignite 2017, where I have a friend and special guest star named Money Penny. Hi, Naomi. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing today? I'm great. Well, actually, you know, my feet hurt, <laughs> my voice is giving out, and my head is exploding from ideas, mm-hmm. and I'm super happy. Exactly. I'm tremendously excited to be here, but yes, Ignite is a marathon, not a sprint, I have to say. So for those of you who are listening to this afterwards, uh, then yes, we had some incredible news this week, and it's been a, a really exciting experience to be able to catch up and see what's going on in the world of SharePoint and beyond. Absolutely. So I want to jump into the news, but just first, why don't you introduce yourself? Because believe it or not, there may be a few people in our audience that don't know you. I consider you the queen and empress of findability. (laughs) But why don't you uh, introduce yourself? (laughs) I'm not going by empress of findability, which I love that, Jeff. Um, I got called the Tsarina Research yesterday night, so everybody's just giving me all kinds of titles. It's really interesting. I will bring an actual (laughs) crown next time I see you. I like that. I like that. So I am with Microsoft now. My name is Naomi Moneypenny, and yes, my name really is Moneypenny, for all of those who might be wondering about that. And I am the senior product manager for SharePoint OneDrive and Yammer, but I look after the the intelligent search and discovery space across Microsoft 365. And Microsoft 365 is Windows, Office, and EMS. Big surface area that you have to tend after. Exactly. And I know that there's a lot of sheep to herd in that space, but you've done that very successfully and had big, big news here at Ignite. So why don't you Tell us a little bit about that. So very exciting news for us is really the idea of adding capabilities to the graph. So as we all know, the Microsoft Graph comes with your Office 365 uh, organization, and that graph is basically learning from the collaborative behaviors you have inside of your company. So it takes not only the structured data you might have from devices, from Azure Active Directory, the groups that you're in, as well as the colleagues you're, you're connected to, but it also looks at how you're collaborating between content and people, meetings tasks, all of those things, right? So we have that fundamental around the graph to be able to power new and amazing experiences. And what we're releasing in Ignite is really upgrading those capabilities. What we're doing is adding another layer of intelligence to the graph that really allows you to personalize your search results across any search surface. And what we mean by search surfaces is really every time you interact with search and the different points that you interact with search. And so it's kind of an interesting way to think about it. If you think about the graph as kind of being that brain inside of your Office 365 uh, organization, I'm really thinking about I've added an extra capability on top of that. I'm making that brain smarter so that I can deliver better, more personalized results anywhere you are in any search experience across Microsoft 365. Cool. And we will post in the show notes both a link to Naomi's announcement blog and to her and... Uh, Katrina Hammerveld explaining and giving some beautiful demos because this all of the night recordings will be available. You've shown some really beautiful experiences. How do you know they work? So the first thing I'll preface this with we really think of that vision in terms of search in the modern workplace as being any experience that you're working with. So we don't want you to break what you're doing in terms of workflow. We want you to actually go to search wherever you're doing work. And so we really have this concept around search is meeting you everywhere that you are doing your work. And so it's really important to think about this, right? What search really means in the context of what you might do in the web browser is different from what it means when you're looking in Windows or when you're working inside of PowerPoint or when you're doing something inside of SharePoint or anywhere else in office.com or any of the other experiences we have. So we really want to think about how do I personalize that? How do I get contextualized results that are relevant to the experience that I'm in, the work that I'm doing, but also that I'm getting personalized results across any of those experiences? And so one of the reasons we know this works right, is really looking at that collaboration data that we have from the graph. We can really help to anticipate what it is that you need. Right? We can look at the files you've been working on recently. We can look at the files that your colleagues have been working on recently. And we can look at connections between those things. We can really help to really rank the results to be the way that you need them as a person versus how they might appear just from an organizational basis. And so we're really not trying to trim down the results that you're seeing. We're merely trying to add signal from the noise, really, and rank them the way that we think is most relevant to you personally. Lest people 
find the Microsoft graph and the intelligence in it uh, opaque. There's also a great session explaining the signals and giving nice examples in nine scenarios. I'll, I'll link that as well. I think our listeners are familiar very much with the idea of personalization and what I sometimes call the big three tools of content improvement, personalization, and fasting as ways to more quickly serve your information needs. Mm -hmm. What's your take on the other two aspects of this? Mm -hmm. Improving the content and providing filtering, faceting, that type of thing. We really think of it in these three kind of similar elements, I think. So it's the personalization, the contextualization, and the boundarylessness of search. And so when we think about how you might improve the content, it's really about better entity extraction in the future. So we've tried for so many years to uh, put the right keywords inside of documents. We've tried to have a lot of manual effort around that. And if you have an employee base that is willing to do that, or you have a search case where it's high value enough inside of your organization that you're willing to spend that extra effort to do so, then it, it works out well. But the other piece of what we're really looking at is how can we employ some of these other technologies that we have that are from Microsoft AI and R and really look at how we can take that entity extraction type of engine, that semantic understanding, and put it into what we have right now inside of the Microsoft Graph Search. And so that's kind of our visionary capabilities. What we're just announcing today is really around this personalization layer. But what we have in addition is thinking about contextualization. We're thinking about how do I do entity extraction and, and use that inside the document. And then if I think about the connections out to other systems, which is the sort of boundarylessness piece of it. And so what we've done right now is just looking at how we can use things like data from LinkedIn. That's slowly coming in. Uh, one of our announcements at Ignite here was you're going to see LinkedIn data if you want to on the people cards. Uh, and those people cards, again, it's about bringing external data in. You can also use use the Office 365 Groups connectors right now as a way to bring data in as well. So things like Salesforce and Trello and Asana, maybe some of those business process systems that you use right now. You can take that kind of data, you can use Flow to actually move it into a system, put it into a SharePoint list. SharePoint list data now surfaces up on your personal search as well as on the enterprise search. And so that's another way of interacting with those data. There are some other plans that are around, but Right now we really think about connectors or big scale connectors to other systems being provided by companies like BA and Let's uh, leave the dirty work to us partners. <laughs> it's hard enough to crawl what we have inside of Office 365 and beyond, right? We really think about how do you want to get that, again, that specific line of business system? How do you want to bring that in as result set inside of your organization and make it useful? So we think about it as customers who are willing to invest in that search experience, then they understand the value of what they're getting there. But for us, the problem is really serving hundreds of millions of users and making sure all of those people are getting a better search result. We've had hundreds of experiences with customers where, by bringing in content from wherever it lives, they're able to provide a much better experience. Mm -hmm. And that lights up the graph. By adding metadata in, by machine, you know, we've recently added in, I haven't even briefed you, a cognitive services mm -hmm. general auto classifier. No. I can report to you, should be no surprise, but that all of that actually does show up in the new search experiences and and it helps. So the the more data, the more metadata you have, the better things are. Right. And that's something we're definitely working on. People have a lot of questions about what have I done with my existing improvements if you've invested in search experiences already. So if you have metadata, it will be even better in this new person searching. Again, our, our effort in this case was just to try to give this extra capability inside of the graph so that personalization is happening in any search experience. And then from there, we can add on even more capability on top of it. So the, the idea is serving everybody, even the companies, smaller businesses, etc., who don't have the web with all to be able to invest in search projects. It's one of the big things we think about this, even with cognitive services and the other AI capabilities of Microsoft. It's that democratization, right, that's happening. We want to really emphasize how we can do search and discovery, but do it for any kind of company. It doesn't matter if it's five people, five thousand, or five hundred thousand. And so search has always been the province of large enterprises, right? It's something you had to invest in. And so now you're just going to get this with your Office 365 subscription every single month better brain that keeps getting better all the time. Uh, certainly my experience being digested into Microsoft with Fast was um, driving a democratization of 
what was in that era high-end search that cost millions of dollars, and only the most sophisticated enterprises could have it. And in the last eight years, that cost has dropped by a factor of 20. Mm -hmm. Now, I see you going to a whole new level with this. And we think, too, the idea of discovery, right, which is the other big piece of this. There's findability, but there's also I'm proactively providing you suggestions and information that's useful to you in those different experiences. And so search is just, again, one piece of that. We really want to think about how can I present the information to the user in such a way that's useful? How do I power better decision-making inside of my company by understanding the value of the information coming in and therefore what content or people, what expertise that we need to do? So skill search, interest search, project search, all of those things. We announced those in May. We're really shipping them very soon. If you have them already, um, you probably have them already in first release. But it's really understanding, like, how can I bring that capability to bear and then proactively suggest things to the user to help you get back to those different outcomes. The, the nine outcomes that Tor Brewing and CJ covered in their 300 level of the graph work session. Yeah, very cool. You know, with this increased intelligence, you talk about making your brain smarter, which I thought just required beer. <laughs> I don't think that works on AI. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe not. And if uh, it has a different synapses problem, <laughs> that it would like to have some neurons destroyed, we'd rather not have that happen. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. Where do you see uh, the Office 365 suite-wide experience going? Because Obviously, there's multiple levels now of search experiences in the suite. Right, and that's what's exciting to us, I think, is we can do great things within SharePoint Search, right? As you saw, we've got some nice preview capabilities in there. It's about having a richer, more interactive experience so that you have a, a better way of finding the things you might need and do it faster, straight from the search page. But we're also trying to help you a little bit in terms of showing like tidbits of information. So if you have uh, a lot of documents that you're working on with very similar titles, oftentimes it's really hard right in the context of a team or meetings or if you have a bunch of meeting notes for example which is always the classic one and so you want to see which meeting notes are the most recent and then multiple people might be working on different versions of the document and all that kind of stuff so we show you those little tidbits to try to help you identify the content faster and we're doing that directly from the search box so it's not even like I have to go to the search page I can just hover over the results inside of the search box and be able to see like, all the tidbits of information on top it's not just that you can it's even find things from search. within yeah. Word, yes. within PowerPoint. Yeah, so inside of those experiences, inside of Office. So it's not just zero term or, you know, results there. We're really looking at how we can put together like information to help you very quickly find the thing that you need to get back to. And so, yeah, inside of, of Word and PowerPoint and, and even in Outlook, we have a new capability called Tap. And Tap is a way of tapping into the knowledge inside of the organization. So up in the header, you see something called insert document item. And in there, it'll actually open up a panel on the right-hand side that allows you to search your organization's SharePoint and OneDrive. Of course, you only ever see the content that you have access to there, but you can do a search across your company and look for other PowerPoint charts or slides that could be useful to you. And you can open it right there from inside of PowerPoint. And so I can just go ahead, I can open up a deck that you may have created earlier, I can say click, add slide, and it just brings it in there. So as opposed to me having to go to a separate search experience, I have to exit out of PowerPoint, I have to go find the thing that my colleague did, bring it back, copy and paste, do all of those, those steps. It's really about putting search where you are, right? Search is really meeting you inside of those documents and uh, the work you're doing. So we see that inside of Outlook. I use the Outlook one all the time. So how many times do you want to send like a little screenshot of people of one slide, right? Yeah, it's like absolutely. a silly both. So, but then there's other capabilities we see inside of uh, PowerPoint, like Quick Starter or something. There's another piece of uh, um, uh, document capabilities that we're working on, as well as things like PowerPoint Designer, right? All of these things are, are helpful, uh, informed by the graph as well. And then the other pieces are really looking at um, how we can insert, like, researcher items. So you've seen in Word for a long time, there's researcher that comes up, so it allows you to see, like, results from the web, puts in footnotes if you're doing an academic 
like paper, all that kind of stuff. And then looking at things like smart lookup. And these will really come into that other intelligence capability, which is we announced this week, which is really around Excel and doing intelligent insights there. And so even though this is not formally search within your enterprise, this is about how do I combine insights from the outside world and be able to read in data that's actually useful. It could be from other systems, but it can also just be direct from the web as well. So you saw that being announced this week with Excel, where if you put in the stock price and the stock tickers with a bunch of companies, you actually see that there's um, data behind those and it can actually transform that into the customer name without you actually having to say what it is exactly. Right? It just finds that field and it understands what it is. So it's that intelligent inside of the content as well as understanding what we can do to deliver the experience that's better for you. So I guess that sort of fits in the boundarylessness. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Although often when my wife tells me that I'm boundaryless, it's not a good thing. <laughs> I think here it's a, a very no natural. There's no such thing as TMI in the graph. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're, we're oversharing, <laughs> as long as things are properly security trimmed, is no problem. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. I see this happening at many, many levels. It's not just the my stuff, our stuff, the world stuff, but um, also the appropriate experience for the appropriate place. Exactly, yeah. And that's what we want to think about, that contextualization angle, like what's useful to you at the moment, right? When you're in Excel, it's really helpful to be able to go get popular data from the web, right, for example, or things that you know exist inside of your company. You shouldn't have to do a bunch of pivot tables in the background to go get data, which should be commonly accessible inside of your organization, right? So being able to do that in the context of where you are, it's not probably that helpful to be able to search off in other experiences during that time, right? So we want to think about how we're bringing search wherever you are and what we can do to actually give you the functionality the feature set that's useful at that minute. So, like, one of the, the newest uh, features that we have, or, uh, feature sets, I should say, that we have is around Bing, right? So one of the, the sort of pieces that we were missing before was this idea of people often just go to their web browsers uh, and actually just go look for content that they could probably find on their intranet, but they just don't know, right? And so sometimes when it's a new area or a new topic for somebody, you might just go to the browser and go do a search in your favorite search engine because that's what you're familiar with, right? And so what we've done is really part with the Bing team to say, hey, you know, we can surface up results from the Microsoft Graph from your organization. We can do that in a very secure and safe way as well inside of your browser and actually even even more secure way for the results and things that you're actually searching on the internet for um, to stop some information leakage that way too. But what we're allowing is that the, the Microsoft Graph can power these intranet results and we can show them on the same page as your web results as well. So you get kind of the best of web and work. And it's really helpful for things like quick lookups uh, like I can look up your name, right? I can look up, see your people card basically right there. It's very simple and easy to find that kind of data. You can look at the organization structure, the kinds of things you would see in SharePoint, like the recent files that I've been working on or that same Delve experience where I can explore through things. So it's, it's a very helpful sort of quick place to look things up. This is one of the highlights of your news and of the conference, mm-hmm. uh, the launch of Bing for Business. And we'll have... Uh, also on this podcast series, a special guest from the Being for Business folks. Uh, you know, personally, I've been working with them for the last two years in terms of making sure that external content can also be represented. Mm-hmm. Making sure that, for example, stuff through all our connectors, mm-hmm. which lights up the graph, also lights up the Being for Business. That's right. Yeah, no, I think that's very exciting. So Lee Chan Miller and her demo on Satya's keynote showed you know, a little bit of that taste of the future. What we're announcing at Ignite is the private preview of Bing for Business. So we have some you know, ways to go on there. You have basically access to the Microsoft Graph data uh, from an organizational perspective inside of the existing uh, Bing experience. And you can play with that. You can add bookmarks and you know, other ways to find easy uh, answers to questions that you might have inside of the company. So it's kind of a, a really great way to be able to set that up as a service. As future. empress of findability. <laughs> You've also extended your tendrils into Windows. 
And I was going to say, so the, the, the exciting piece is really looking at things like questions and answers, right, in the future. That's what Lee Chen showed, right, the ability to ask for expenses and seeing relevant personal data that's coming from an external system. And so that's where we're going, right, in the future. You think about how to, to actually do that kind of searching and make it personal so much so that it knows who you are and what you might try to be actually. But yes, it goes even across that. As I said before, Microsoft 365 includes Windows, Office 365, and EMS. And so we're really looking at all of those experiences together. And so Windows is also one of those search places. So now you have the ability to look in your taskbar, basically start typing into your search term, and you'll be able to surface up local results as well as organizational results too. And how long before we see that wired up automatically to Cortana? And so, yeah, Cortana is still a direction for us, so it will be 2018 for sure. <laughs> okay, is that February or is that November? <laughs> Uh, 2018? <laughs> so. I think 2018 is going to be a good year. It will be a very good year. <laughs> so, Naomi, I, I've started a betting pool. Mm-hmm. You're a betting oh. man, Jeff. I never knew this about you. I usually bet ice cream. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hence my girlish figure. I see. <laughs> and uh, the uh, I count today uh, nine different search experiences mm-hmm. within... Office 365, not counting the clients or exchange, much less dynamics. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of ways of looking at that, whether nine is good or bad. I think they all have different flavors. Again, from our perspective, search is meeting you wherever you are. So we want search to be embedded in everything. It should be a utility that goes across anything that we're working on. It's not like consumer search where we believe there's one search box you go to, but you break the work that you're doing right now and you have to go off and, and look at that search box. So we don't think that's a great result. So inside of SharePoint search, inside of Delve, uh, inside of office.com, all of these results will be personalized and they'll do it across the graph. So you should have contextual and personalized results that are all consistent provided by the graph. My betting pool, to come back to that sure. prize to be determined later, mm-hmm. is... Uh, one year mm-hmm. from now, let's say October 1st, in the fabulous Next year of 2018, <laughs> how many separate experiences will there be? I don't know how many there will be. There will be as many as there are work experiences that help you get things done. So it should be everywhere. You shouldn't have to break what you're doing to find the things that you need to get your work done. Very good. So I'll, um, I'll invite listeners as well to bet in that betting pool and uh, treat this as part of my, my side job, which is giving Naomi a hard time. It's all good. I, I win all the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's your favorite flavor? Oh, my goodness. I let's just say ice cream is <laughs> my favorite flavor. <laughs> I never met an ice cream I didn't like. That's the problem. <laughs> yes. I wanted to recognize that this is a relatively new role for you. It is. And being at Microsoft and, you know, from the outside, you have gotten off to a great start and managed a lot of, managed, like, seems like you're firmly in the saddle. Five months into Microsoft. So, but the good thing was, of course, being Microsoft MVP for many years. That's how I know you for so many years, as well as our, our partnering. And so it's, it's the good thing around that is having that ecosystem. And so it's the awareness of having a great ecosystem of people we can talk to, uh, get customer opinions on things, as well as just understanding what's going on and how people are approaching their projects. So that's what I, I like to think I'm bringing inside of Microsoft a little bit more, right? And, uh, and that's why you're seeing sort of some of this emphasis on doing this consistently across platforms and not waiting for just point solutions to, to roll out, which is what has happened in the past a lot and causes a lot more customer confusion. It's all about the graph and it's about capability in the graph and you're surfacing it up in many different ways. I think you have the perspective to take this enormous surface area mm-hmm. and be able to consider it all at once. Mm-hmm. So what has been your biggest surprise in this role? Given that you've known Microsoft for many years, you've been an MVP, sort of stepping into things, what surprised you in the last six months in this new gig? It's been really interesting to see how all of these capabilities are worked together. Um, it's it's been 
interesting to see how engineering does develop based on so many customer feedbacks um, and really see the, the, the focus on customers that exist inside of Microsoft, even though it may not feel that way when from the outside. I know as an MVP, I was thinking, oh, they're not listening, they're not listening. They are listening so hard. Uh, so everything you write in user voice, every feedback thing that you send, every you know, everything you send through the message center, all of those different ways, the Yammer posts, all of the stuff that we write on tech community, people are listening and they're reading all of that and it's just you know finding the way the balance to get that capability uh, put into engineering and actually delivered out into the product so i guess there's no such thing as too much listening no, no just like there's no it. such thing as too much information yeah. in the graph <laughs> there's no such thing as tmi in the modern workplace right, the graph. <laughs> right? So, but yeah i do think that's the the amazing thing and also the looking at like how that comes from the leadership down it really does exist there so you'd be surprised at how technical our leadership can be sometimes and actually understanding all of these different issues across the different product groups and making all these things work together. So it's been very impressive internally to see that there's so much customer focus. Um, and, and you know, that's why we're pushing out all this innovation because this is stuff that people ask for. So on the one hand, I know from sitting outside of Microsoft, it's like, oh my God, there's this fire hose of stuff coming all the time and there's like this torrent of new features and why can't they slow down? But you know what? It's because customers ask for it all, right? It's not because Microsoft just felt like doing it, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's like it was asked for by somebody. And so we're trying to deliver on all of those things too. A, uh, this diverse, the recognition that search is not one thing and there's a diversity of information goals, which of course the academic search circles have known forever. There's a whole taxonomy of different things. But boiling it down to sort of known item find versus unknown question exploration or what you call search and discovery um, has been a difficult thing for people to grok. And you've picked up that torch very firmly uh, in the diversity of experiences. Do you you think that this needs explanation or do you think it will simply be as people continue to use Delve and Search for different things? Um, Again, we hope that it's just built into every experience and you shouldn't have to think about it. The same way as you don't expect that an email will do anything different the next time you open it up, right? You open up Outlook, you expect an email to pop up, you know what to do in there, right? And so that same consistency and expectation of what you think as a person is going to happen during that experience should occur in every single experience that you're in, right? Inside of Office and Windows and everywhere else. And so by that, I just mean that when you think search is a utility, it's just like electricity, right? That it should always be there and you only notice it when it isn't, right? And so the fact that people are getting it, I think even at night, this conference has been really interesting to see the sort of reactions from customers, because I was concerned we were going to get a lot of questions about, yes, there's too much search everywhere, and there's a million search experiences. But again, if we understand that that consistent level is the graph, and that we're getting that consistent set of results, and it's being injected into every experience that you have, then it becomes like electricity, and you just expect to find things when you go into a document and you're doing document creation, or whether you're doing document finding, or whether you're doing document workflow, or anything else. You might be doing. Yeah. Well, I'm still excited by electricity. It's nice that the lights work, <laughs> exactly, and it's exactly. nice that it's everywhere. Exactly. And you certainly had uh, a lot of attention, a, uh, a shout out in Satya's keynote. And how many people did you have at your introduction session? I don't know. Probably around a thousand or so. I didn't get to count or look at anything yet, but it's about a thousand in that room, I think. You weren't counting while you were talking? No, I was not counting. While I'm not I was sure talking. I can count to a thousand. Uh, I, I could count chairs beforehand. Exactly. That was, that was no, I, I, I estimated that you had 1,100 people. Okay, there. well, there we go. <laughs> I'll go with your estimate. Um, <laughs> so, congratulations. Thank you. And uh, is well, there? Kudos really is going to the engineering teams, right? So I'm just having to be the person who pulls this message yeah, together. Yeah, no, I know you have nothing. To, you have nothing to do with it. Nothing yeah. to do with it all. But, but it's really is all the engineering and product teams, right? There's lots of different product teams involved in this, from from the Bing side, from Windows, from uh, Norway, obviously with fast engineering there. So yeah, a lot of product teams uh, involved in all of this. And if you uh, wanted to leave our listeners with, you know, one. Last thought, one, you know, what should they do next mm-hmm. in this exploration if they want to know more? 
Sure. So uh, it's a number of pieces, as you mentioned. So we have uh, blogs out on techcommunity.microsoft.com. We've uh, recently had uh, the intelligent search and discovery blog now on techcommunity.microsoft.com. So we'll be keeping up to date there, a lot more in FAQs and a lot more stuff as we get closer to being able to release a lot of these new personalization experiences. And so I think from, from my perspective, it's like, you know, we're trying to give you the heads up of what we're doing and the concept and the vision of, of why we think enterprise search is different and by enterprise we mean everybody from five com- you know five person companies up to uh, the biggest companies in the world and we really are thinking about what that vision means for you and so that's why we're trying to show you that range of experiences and the range of what is possible and so all of these do rely on the Microsoft graph so if it's something that's a, an issue currently inside of your organization you need to explore a little bit more around that um, you know Building more experiences, more intelligence into the graph is definitely going to be the direction of the future. So if there's anything that you can do there in terms of preparing your organization for more graph, is really important. Great. And we'll put, again, into the show notes, key links for you listeners to follow up with. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad we could catch up here live from Ignite. Absolutely, Jeff. It's definitely a pleasure. Always a pleasure to see you and really excited by what we're doing. And I hope that everybody listening is too. On behalf of BA Insight, this has been Shared Insights. Shared Insights.